Amdoni is asking, freedom of speech is not 100% free and absolute since it has limitations. Julian Assange, uh, Australian journalist and the guy behind WikiLeaks. I think everybody knows who Julian Assange is, but thank you for the intro. Is evidence that freedom of speech has limitations when Assange leaked documents and videos of the US uh, of USA's atrocities in the Middle East. He was declared an enemy of the state, a threat to national security under Espionage Act. Do you guys think freedom of speech is truly free? Okay, so freedom of speech, you, you okay. I don't know the way you're talking about freedom of speech is truly free is that is as if it's like there's something free freedom of speech is truly free but how much i think the question should be like how much freedom of speech should we have because as a concept freedom of speech refers to freedom so i i don't like it's not whether or not freedom of speech is free because it's it is freedom of speech, so it is free, <laughs> right? I think your question is like, what is the level of freedom of speech that we have? So there's two questions. What is the level of freedom of speech we have? And what is the level of freedom of speech we should be having? Okay. So one of them is descriptive. The other one is normative. Okay. So descriptive, obviously, there's not a single place on earth right now that we have absolute freedom of speech, okay? There's no country where it says like anything goes. Um, like one of the, and I don't know, you're talking, so the best country to uh, as an example for the highest level of free speech, one of the highest level of free speech is the United States of America, okay? And United States of America, even though it's, it, has more freedom of speech than many other advanced countries, more than most uh, European countries, it doesn't have absolute freedom of speech, okay? So for example, United States, um, you have libel laws, right? You have, you can't call out, you, you, direct inc incitement to violence is illegal, right? Uh, there's another couple of examples, okay? So yeah, we don't have absolute freedom of speech anywhere, okay? Um, I may, and we don't want absolute freedom. We want a high level of free speech, but we don't want absolute free speech. It's ridiculous to expect high level of free speech. Like if somebody comes at like, hey, I think like somebody should go and like do something to our men and it's, the act is a violent act. I think like, well, uh, yeah, thank you. So can somebody please arrest that person? Like that would be good. Nice, right? Um, Kenny is saying in the live chat, calling for violence goes beyond just expressing yourself. Well, every form of speech goes beyond just expressing yourself. Okay, I mean, for example, it, it's also, it, it, you know, if I say like, hey, people, can you, some, can, can somebody do, draw a painting for me? I will pay them. That's speech, but it goes beyond just speech. It's, an, it's a command as well, right? But... I mean, libel laws, for example. Oh, for example, if I say like, hey, people, this cures cancer, right? Go drink this, it cures cancer, and it doesn't, okay? That would be fraud, that would be illegal. So even in, United, even in the United States, even though, so, so we're, we're, we don't, we're not asking for absolute freedom of speech, we're just asking for high levels of free speech. There was a way that I described it to Susanna, we both, we're so so we're not free speech absolutist okay we're free speech the way i describe it to susanna is that we are free speech maximalist okay and free speech maximalist means that we want the maximum level of free, uh, free speech that is possible okay and where what does that mean that line has to be discussed Um, so Kenny is saying how I see this is you be free to express yourself, express your ideas. I mean, somebody could say like, I want to express the idea that it would be good for me to pay the person who does something to Armin. You know what I mean? 
people like I don't think expressing. Yeah, you can say you can say well, and also somebody could say like I am expressing my view that so and so did this and this. Um and but right now in the United States uh, and if, if it's a lie, maybe libel laws will make that illegal, right? So yeah. Um, but I do agree that there should be very few limitations on free on freedom of speech. Very few, right? So, for example, if you say like if if you say like if if it's incitement, if it's fraud, if it's libel, these are just few examples where we want to say like okay, these are red lines. Mm, but other than that, other than few uh, few exceptions, everything else goes okay. So that I I think that will. What uh, make it makes it so that there is a lot of free? Okay, but I don't know. Maybe like so. What about the Julian Assange one, right? So a lot of us agree that Julian Assange like did nothing wrong, right? But would it make sense for that for that to be legal for what he did, right? Let me see. What was the law? Threat to national security under the Espionage Act. Okay, what is the Espionage Act? The Espionage Act. The Espionage Act of here. Because like even if we if, even if we think Julian Assange did nothing wrong, even if we agreed to that, does it make sense for us to legalize what he did? Because maybe it doesn't make sense. Maybe like sometimes breaking the law is the right thing to do, but you still want the law to be in place. Here, the Spanish, uh, Espina, Spanish, no. the Espionage Act of 1917 is a United States federal law enacted on June 15, 1917, shortly after the United States states entered World War One. It has been amended numerous times over the years. It was originally found in Title 50 of the U.S. Code, War and National Defense. Defense but is now found under okay i don't what is it like can you just tell me what it is here it was intended to prohibit interference with military operations or recruitment to prevent insubordination in the military and to prevent the support of united states enemies during war okay i hate it i hate this law in in 1919 the supreme court of the united states unanimously ruled through Sherlock versus United States, that the act did not violate the freedom of speech of those convinced under its pro provisions. Okay, so apparently the fact that this was discussed, that means that this is an act that people see as a challenge to freedom of speech, okay? But the Supreme Court decided that that's not the case. The constitutionality of the law, its relationship to free speech, and the meaning of its language have been contested in court ever since okay but what is the law among those charged okay it seems like to me it seems like given that this is a big discussion right given that people are arguing over the fact that hey this is a violation of free speech or not okay i think i hate it okay i think that that because like i'm a, okay so i'm not a free speech absolutist i'm a free speech maximalist okay so I have to look into this more, but I think like whenever there's a discussion over whether or not this should be free speech or should not be free speech, okay, I'm going to say, take the side of the free speech people, okay? Since this is a huge debate and I want to be for a free speech maximalist, right now my vote is casted on the side of this is horrible, get rid of the Espionage Act or whatever it is, okay? um but i can look into more of it i okay to me it seemed like this is a bad act and yeah so if we, if you if, if you need to get rid of it i wish there was a summary of exactly what it does i don't want to have to spend the entire stream reading because we have to get to the other questions what does it do it just tells people not to say certain things okay yeah i hate it i hate it i hate it Okay, D is saying in the live chat, it has to be specific and immediate to be legal. This is how pastors can get away with saying, oh, no, this is about something, yeah. 
Okay, PK has a good comment. PK is saying, if the leaked documents are for exposing the illegal activities of the government, then it should be protected. Okay, but a lot of them weren't. So he just willy-nilly just released a whole bunch of documents. So, for example, okay, shouldn't it be illegal? Like, let's say, for example, the United States is, like, has spies in Iran. Okay, here's a good, here's a good example, okay? So let's let, let's just, like, be a little bit more nuanced. Let's just, like, be black and white and be like, oh, yeah, it shouldn't be there. There should be no limitation. Everything should be free. Expose the government, okay? What about this, okay? What if the United States had spies in Iran? Okay, and I had the name of the spies, and then I leaked them. And now the spies in Iran who are doing good work because they're against the Islamic Republic of Iran, right? Now they're like sitting ducks. Like they were, and by the way, Iran, uh, spies for the United States in Iran are probably Iranians, okay? And they're helping the United States get information about like IRGC or stuff like that, okay? So this is good work that they're doing, and I just released their names. And now the government of Iran could just go arrest them and execute every single one of them. Okay. That should be legal. Do you agree guys? That should be illegal. So, so what Julian Assange did, like he's okay. So maybe I'm, I don't know about this anymore. Okay. But Julian Assange just like release a whole bunch of information. Okay. We hear about the ones that like, we mostly focus on the ones that were like good that it, that was released. Right. For example, all the atrocities that the United States government did, and we're like, oh my God, thank you for releasing those information. But what about all the other data that he dumped out without vetting them? I think he didn't vet them. Did he vet them? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think he vet them. He didn't vet them. That are like put a whole bunch of other people at risk. Like those are those are bad, right? So what if he only did those? Wouldn't we now say like, yeah, he should be arrested? Those what he did was illegal. Kenny in the live chat saying that's a fair point. It would be uh, it would put people at risk, but there should be a way to whistle blow, blow correctly. Well, I think I think um, what's his name? Snowden did that. Right? Is that how you say his name? He did it more. I don't know who did it more responsibly. I forgot about this, but one of these two. When they were leaking information, they went through journals. Yeah, it was Snowden, I think, went through The Guardian, didn't he? I forgot, but this was a long time ago. Uh, and he was like, I'm not going to dump all this information out. I'm going to go through journalists, and they're going to vet it, and they're going to release it responsibly so I don't put anybody at risk. Um, I don't remember if this is how it happened, right? So I think Julian Assange was like, Bleh, right? And he just, like, released it, and he just, like, Guy, the, what the hell are you doing? You're putting people at risk, okay? And Edward Snowden was like, I'm going to go talk to experts. I'm going to talk to journalists. They're going to go through this data, and they're going to only release the parts that don't put people at risk. This is a very oversimplification. I think Snowden did it more pro uh, properly. I don't know. I don't know. I forgot about I've This was like, um, yeah, Higgs boson is saying Snowden was the resp was responsible. Yes. So maybe, maybe Julian Assange did something, should be praised and condemned pay, praised for leaking the parts that were supposed to be praised and condemned for the parts that he, he shouldn't have released and edward edward Snowden is the real hero he was like responsible all the way uh imran in the live chat is saying yes Snowden tried going through the proper government channels uh repeatedly but was shut down yeah i think Snowden should not Snowden should be part pardoned Kenny saying you are right. Snowden was much more careful about it. Okay, okay. Snowden should be pardoned. Julian Assange, I don't know. I have to think about that. No, oh, but Assange isn't American. Oh yeah, you're right. I don't know how the legal stuff works. If you, I, I'm pretty sure, like even if you're not American, if you if you go to espionage and stuff, like you could get in trouble with the U.S. U.S. government has some can can still do stuff to you. Atheist Republic needs your help. We've been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Abhabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.